Last week we talked about variables, and if we create really a lot of variables, then they might be hard to manage, because there is only so many names that we can give to our variables, so they will clash. To deal with this problem, in C++ there is a thing called namespaces. So today we're going to be talking about those namespaces and how to use them. To kick off, I will show again the slide uh, that I showed before, with all the symbols and all the emojis that I will be sprinkling all over my slides. There is a bunch of style recommendations, there is some uh, design recommendations, and maybe some things to, uh, to tell you that something is not the best practice. I will also show some symbols uh, to indicate which version of C++ this particular information is corresponding to. If I have a triangle pointing up, and uh, the number is near it, it means that it holds for this version of C++. Say, if the numbers are 17, it will be C++ 17 and up. If the triangle is facing down, it means that uh, it holds only for versions of C++ until this uh, version, but not inclusive. If you get confused, feel free to return to this slide and check up on these symbols. Okay, so namespaces is basically just a space that has a certain name to it. And uh, any variables can live in namespaces. Well, technically other stuff can also live in namespaces, but we don't know about other stuff, so for now we'll just focus on variables. Um, to create a namespace, you use the keyword namespace, so the compiler will understand if you say namespace that you want to create a namespace. And then you provide the name of this namespace, you open the curly brackets, you put the, the contents of that namespace into that namespace, and then you close the, the curly brackets. Uh, you can also make uh, namespaces live in other namespaces. You just do it by typing the namespace inside of the other namespace. It's a good style to end the namespaces with a certain comment, and this comment would uh, contain the word namespace and then the name of the namespace. Uh, but don't worry, Clang Format will do it for you uh, if you're using Clang Format. And you really should be using Clang Format. Finally, try to name the namespaces consistently, and Google Stylesheet uh, suggests to name them in snake case and do not indent the code inside of the namespace. You might have noticed that we open and close the curly brackets here. And uh, if you watched the previous video, you might be thinking, hey, is this a scope? Like, do variables live only within the namespace and then die by the end of it? And, well, the answer is no. So every variable that lives in a namespace still lives in a global scope. Its name is just modified by this namespace. You can think of it as uh, uh, taking the namespace and attaching it as a prefix of your variable name with the two double dots in between. So, for example, if I have a certain variable in the namespace foo, like on the slide, um, then if I, want to, uh, if I want to use this variable, I would use it in outside of this namespace by providing the foo, then double dots, and then the name of my variable. So let's look at this small example on the slide now. We have uh, two namespaces. We have namespace foo and we have a namespace bar, as usual. And we have uh, the variable or a constant in both of them. And this constant has exactly the same name. So the constant name is constant. I, I don't have much imagination, <laughs> I guess. So uh, we can use this constant um, or both of these constants in the same context because they live in different namespaces. So if I want to print both of them, I can just use the foo constant and the bar constant, and the compiler will figure out which one's which. So that's that. If you are within a namespace, so within the brackets of the namespace, then you can use uh, the variable names as you normally would do, because you are already in that namespace. I hope it makes sense. So, uh, and you can split the namespace definition across different files and across different, well, definitions of this uh, namespace. So if I have the namespace keyword with the name, let's say, CPP course twice, then they will magically know that they live in the same namespace. So for example, if I, have, if I want to create this another number in my, um, in my well, second definition of my uh, namespace, I can just use the k number from the first definition of this namespace. And it will all just work. And then, of course, I can reference these uh, in my main function, which is outside of my namespaces, with the CPP cores, four dots, and then the names of my, uh, of my constants. If you think that typing out all of these uh, four dots or double dots uh, in, uh, in the names of your variables is a bit tedious, especially when the namespaces get uh, inside of other namespaces and their names get longer, you're right. 
it might get tedious. So to ease up our life, there is a word using for this. Now, using is used in more contexts than just this, but today we're going to be talking about just this one context. Using can be used in any scope and in any namespace. So, for example, if we find ourselves in a main function and we want to use a certain variable from a certain uh, namespace, let's say CPP course, we can just say using CPP course, then all the four dots, and uh, the name of our variable or constant or whatever else we want to use from that namespace, and then we can use it without the specifier. Basically, we explicitly tell, hey compiler, we want to use this as if it's in our namespace, in our scope right now. So, uh, and that's how uh, everything will just work. A couple of uh, rules of thumb here, uh, do not use it from the global scope because it will pollute the global namespace, unless you're in CPP file. Because in CPP file, you're not going anywhere from here. Like you're never including this CPP file into anything. A lot of tutorials show using namespace, usually in form of std uh, or std, but um, never use this, like never do this. If you're doing, if you're using the using namespace of something, then what you're essentially doing is you're taking all of those variables that were neatly encapsulated in a namespace, and now you're basically polluting your current namespace, whichever that is, with all of those contents without actually looking into what you're, what you're taking from there. And it's very rare that you need everything from a namespace, right? Usually you would need a certain variable or a certain function or a certain thing from that namespace. So just use that. Don't use using the whole namespace. Finally, I want to talk about a so-called unnamed namespace. Unnamed namespace is just that. It's a namespace that has no name. And uh, the way to define it is, as you might have already guessed, you just type the namespace, then you omit the name, and then you put anything, uh, any variables inside of it uh, as you see fit. The way it works is that whenever the compiler sees the unnamed namespace, it uh, basically just generates a namespace with a unique and random name, and then it uses a using directive within this file to be able to use anything within this namespace. And uh, because of how it works and because of this using directive, you should never ever use these unnamed namespaces in any, any file that will be included in other files, meaning in any form of a header file. I know that we didn't formally talk about header files, but we did talk a little bit about includes. And whenever you include something, that means that you just copy the contents of whatever is there into another file. And uh, that means that you will also copy this, the using of this particular unique namespace. And that means that wherever you include this, you will kind of share, um, you will kind of pollute the global namespace with your variables there. And that's not nice. We already discussed that before. So only use the unnamed namespaces within your CPP files. And that's it. That's all you need to know about namespaces and how they work with variables. See you in the next one. Bye.